Today we're going to read from Romans 4. And Roman gets, Romans gets a little, I wouldn't say muddy, deep. And a lot of times when we're reading through scriptures like that, you kind of just have to push through, ask the Lord to help you understand what you can, and then just put up on the shelf what uh, it is that you're kind of struggling to understand. And in good time, God will reveal that to you when it's needed. He's, he promised that His Holy Spirit would bring back to remembrance the things that we have learned. And so when the time comes, the thing is, we have to realize that reading from the scriptures is not like reading the newspaper. It's not like reading the, a history book or a magazine. It's reading the living Word of God. We're partaking of Him. And so it's not like it's just going into the brain and lying dormant there. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And, you know, the rest of the verse... And it can do things in our lives that nothing else can do. So never underestimate the reading of his word. It's not just about filling the mind. It's not much use up there if it just stays up there. There's actually, I have two songs that are going through my mind. And um, the first one is called Sweet Will of God. You know... We had a friend of ours about the same age as Nate. He had a bike accident, a dirt bike accident, broke his leg. And so we pray for him, pray for Gage that he'd have a quick recovery. What a way to spend the summer, I tell you. He, he's going to be a, need, he's going to be in need of patience and quick healing. So we pray for him and the family. But I was thinking, you know, as parents, we like to ask the Lord for their protection. And it's natural too, and it's not, it's not a bad thing. But it's been several years now that I have more directed my prayers in regards to my kids that they would be in God's will. That started, I guess, six, seven years ago when my, when my brother lost their oldest daughter in a car accident, a single vehicle accident and I'm you know we we pray for protection for our kids but God has a will and my prayer for my kids is that they be in his will so this is a song that as I was weeding in the garden yesterday afternoon for a while it just went over and over in my heart now let's see what key sweet Still fold me closer till I Gethsemane had his time when he was wanting to, you know, pray for his protection. But then he said, he said, Lord, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And so his ultimate prayer was that he be in the will and the plan of God. So I hope that can be our prayer as well. That's really where we want to be. I'll sing it again. Sweet will of God, still fold me closer till I
sweet will of God, fold me closer till I am lost in Thee. It's not an easy prayer to pray sometimes until we can get rid of what we want and want what God wants for our life. Praise the Lord. We're going to be reading from Romans 4 today. And like I said, you know, there there's, gets to be a whole lot of legality that Paul is talking about in Romans. And don't worry... I'll, say, I'll speak for myself. I don't worry too much about having to understand it all. We understand what we are able, but sometimes you just have to push through it and let the Lord impress on you what He wants to impress. The thing about the Scriptures is, even if you do think you understand it, the Holy Spirit can always come up with something else for you to chew on. There, there could be a verse that you've read a thousand times, but he will reveal something different about it the thousand and one time. And that's the wonderful thing about the Word of God. It's just so deep. So here we go. Romans chapter 4, verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, has found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he has nowhere up to glory. He hath, he hath where up to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only? or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of of all them that believe. Though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Wonderful thing. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of faith of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. Paul's really nailing down that point. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for, the, for where no law is, there's no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom ye believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. 
He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Wonderful thing. Now there is something to believe in. There is something to, to grab a hold of today. We need to believe. And he has not ever given us any reason not to believe. We can look to him in pure confidence, knowing what he has done for us. And we just need to believe in him. And he will, he will put on that righteousness to us that, uh, that is so required. 